Hello, shalom. Welcome again to What Up with Gloria. Yes, I hope you're all safe and keeping well. Amen, amen. If you're here for the very first time, I'd like to specially welcome you. And for those who have been returning and you have never subscribed to this channel, please feel free to do so. Help us to share this video too if you can, and that will help us in um, the spreading of the gospel. Like and leave me a comment if you can, and God bless you. Last time on my last video, we talked about favor and we looked at five scriptures that you can pray in your life to help activate favor or to help you walk in favor. You activate, you pray these scriptures and you activate the faith to walk in favor. And after I'd done that video, I felt like I would be remiss if I didn't talk about this lady. And her name is Ruth. Last time we looked at Esther. And uh, for those who are not familiar with the story of Ruth, I'm not going to go back to the history. You can go to the book of Ruth in the Bible from chapter 1. You'll be able to read, read the whole of this account. Uh, for those who are uh, familiar with the text or the story, you all know that um, Naomi and Ruth were mother-in-law and daughter-in-law. They had both lost their husbands. Ruth's husband was Naomi's son and Naomi had lost her husband and her two sons. She had another daughter in law who went back. And so at some point when life became very difficult and they hear that God has remembered his people, Naomi decides to come back. She gives her daughter in laws a chance to go back to their people, but Ruth chooses to stay. And she chooses to stay because she has chosen the God of Naomi. So they come back. And when they come back, uh, they are starting from the bottom. They are starting from nothing. Remember, they have not been in this land for years. They have not been working on the fields. If they had any fields, they didn't work on them. They didn't sow. They didn't have a harvest. They had nothing. They are coming to start life all over again. And so Ruth decides to go and glean. And for those people who are familiar with gleaning, gleaning was something that the Lord had commanded that when people are harvesting from their land, they should not harvest everything, but they should leave something behind for the poor so that those people that have nothing to eat, they can come and pick up the leftovers. You know, usually it was the poor people who would come and pick up what, so whatever grains and whatever produce was left, the leftovers. So that was known as gleaning. And this is what Ruth says in the book of Ruth, chapter 2 and verse 2. I'll read from verse 2. It says, And Ruth the Moabites, the Moabit, said to Naomi, Let me go to the field and pick up the leftover grain behind anyone in whose eye I find favor. Okay? She's going to glean. But because she's a foreigner, she knows that she will need a favor even to start in going into the field. All right. So before she does anything, she declares favor into her life. And Naomi tells her, go ahead, my daughter. And so she went out and she entered a field and began to glean behind the harvesters. The Bible says she entered a field. She didn't know at the time whose field it was, but it was the first field that she entered, did not know the owner. So it's safe to say that favor is leading her because it turns out that the field that she went to, that she entered, belonged to a very wealthy man by the name of Boaz. And while she's harvesting there, Boaz turns up. And when he turns up, he greets his workers and then he notices Ruth and he asks the people, Whose young woman is that? Whose young woman is that? That is in verse 5. So Boaz comes. There's so many young women working in this field. But he notices Ruth. And then he tells her. When they tell her who she is. He tells her. Do not go to another field. You stay here. You work behind my young ladies here. My, the maidens who are harvesting here. You are free to go and drink water from where the men are filling up the jars. And then he tells her, I have told all the young women, not to, the young men, not to bother you. Immediately, this guy has just turned up the first time he's never seen this woman. And suddenly he's zoomed in on her and he's giving her access to his field. He's giving her access to the water that was being filled in the jars. Uh, he's giving her access to security. He's even asked the young men, do not bother that young lady. 
immediately he hovers around her. That is what favor can do, guys. That is what favor can do. This girl knew she was starting with a lot of disadvantages. She was a foreigner. In fact, she says, when Boaz notices her and he gives her all this access, this is what she says to Boaz. Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you notice me a foreigner? That's in verse 10. Why am I finding so much favor with you? The morning, at the time she was praying this prayer and telling her mother, you know, let me go and see whoever I find favor. That's what she was. She was not aware that she was activating favor into her life that would overwhelm her, that would open doors for her, that would cause her to be noticed, that would give her access even to things that she didn't have access. She's a gleaner. She was not, um, a person who was gleaning was not given the same rights as everybody who was working there or the people who belonged there. She would come and glean and then, you know, usually she would just pick up the leftovers and go. But this woman has been given access to things that she did not have access to. And that is what favor will do in your life. Once you learn how to activate and pray for favor and ask God to help you to walk in favor, God gives you access to places you would never have access to. God causes people to notice you who would have never noticed you. But there are things that you must do. Number one, you have to take us, declare the favor, pray it and declare it on your life. But don't just declare it. Take a step of faith. Take a step of faith and do not be afraid to start from the bottom. Don't be afraid to start from zero. When you have favor working in your life, favor will take you from zero to a hundred within no time. We see that happening in the life of Ruth to the point where she's overwhelmed. And eventually, those people who know this story, you know that eventually Boaz and Ruth, they end up getting married. They have a child, a son named Obed. And we know that Obed was a great, 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 great grandfather of Jesus Christ. Can you imagine? Look at what favor is doing in the life of this young woman. It's given her access to all these things. Eventually, she becomes the landowner. She comes from behind the queue to the top. You know, she comes from zero to eating in abundance. She becomes the landowner of the very place that where she was gleaning and picking up leftovers. But at the same time, God puts her in the genealogy and in the bloodline of Jesus Christ. You, you, you can't get better than that. You could not get better than that. You could not have had favor do anything greater than becoming a, an ancestor of the Savior, Jesus Christ. Do not be afraid to start. If you have nothing, don't be afraid to start from nothing. Don't be afraid to start from the bottom. God will give you a big glow up and you will level up to a point even that will blow people's minds, that will even blow your own mind. God will cause things to happen that you did not even imagine. He will give you exceedingly abundantly above what you even asked. Amen. God bless you. Amen and amen.